we're studying how to walk in the new life now. You see, this is a wonderful thing that the Lord has given us. And a lot of times we just don't understand what we've been given. It's as simple as that. The Lord has given us eternal life, and not just eternal life, but forgiveness of sins, and not just forgiveness of sins, but freedom from the guilt and the shame of our sins, and not just freedom from the guilt and the shame of our sins, but power to walk in a new life that's different than the old life, power not to make all the same mistakes and fall back into all the same traps of the enemy. This is a wonderful gift that the Lord has given us. So we need to learn how to walk in this power of the new life that Jesus gave us. So I want to start just by going over to Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse number 13. Jesus was talking to his original apostles, but we know that this word is also for us as well. And he says in Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now look, this is like taking a test where the teacher already gives you the answers. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I've never been like a real teacher in the public school system, but I have substitute taught quite a bit in, in past years. And I know there were some times when the teacher would leave me with the review sheet, and the review sheet had all the answers, and I was to hand those out to all the students and tell them that there's going to be a test tomorrow. I mean, literally, the teacher gave them all the answers on the review sheet the night before the test, and then some some of the people still didn't pass the test. Well, Jesus is testing his apostles here, and he's saying, who do men say that I am? But if you listen, he gives them the answer to the test before they even take it. And he says, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, and some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Well, they're not doing very good on the test right now, are they? But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up. He answered up. He stepped up, and he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, they shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now look, are you seeing this? He's given us the answers uh, to our life's need right here. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. Well, that was because the time had not yet come for the whole world to know. But now is the time for the whole world to know, and now we are to go. But do you see what's happening here? Jesus gave his disciples authority. Now, when it says that he gave them authority, he wasn't just talking to the original 12. He was talking to you and I. When Jesus came into your life, when you repented of your sins, and said, Jesus be in my life. Along with that confession came the Holy Spirit and came power and came, came authority uh, that, that you received that now you can wield or yield rather that, that authority in your life. Now, there are some things that are going to buck against the system. They're not going to like your authority. There are some stubborn demons uh, that are going to kick back, just like some dogs, you know, playing, <laughs> playing alpha dog, you know, and, and you got to remind the dog that you're the dog and I'm the owner. And when you do that, you got a good relationship with your pet. Well, sometimes you got to remind these devils and these demons that Jesus gave me authority. You were stripped. You were torn down. Uh, Jesus exposed you for who you are. And, the, and now I have authority to walk in a new life. I have authority to walk in a new life that the devil and his demons are never going to get. Now, let me tell you, this is important on so many levels. 
But one of the reasons this is important is because it's the very thing that brings God glory. You see, Jesus is the king. We say amen to that. But where is the evidence of him being the king? When he gave us authority as his disciples, and then we went out and learned how to exercise that authority, and we began casting out demons and healing the sick and, and, and prospering and living a, a new life, not just being forgiven of our sins, but escaping all the same old sin traps, traps uh, and loving people that hate us and misuse us. When these things begin to happen, then what happens is Jesus gets glory. It is an evidence, it is a proof that he is uh, who he said he is. Now, if I said, uh, you know, to you, I'm the sheriff and I give you authority to go over and, and make a citizen's arrest of your neighbor. Well, that's not real authority because I'm not really the sheriff. And I don't think that's a real decree that the sheriff can really make. But when Jesus gave us authority... Oh, he's really the son of God. <laughs> so he had the authority to give it to us and to delegate it to us. And when Jesus issued a decree, it's a real decree that, that his death, his burial in a sinner's grave for a substitutionary death for you and I, but then the grave couldn't hold him and he rose up and it proved in the power of the resurrection who he is. And so he had the authority to give us real authority. And our authority authority stands up not just in theory our authority stands up in real life when we learn to walk in it because through it when we learn to exercise it Jesus will receive glory I mean we're not supposed to be constantly walking around like a bunch of sick busted and disgusted people come on the old us is dead and Jesus gave us new life and along with that he gave us authority now you see, he gave us the answers and the secret here to this new life. He said that as his disciples, with his authority, that we could bind and we could loose. And what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose in heaven is loosed on earth. Go ahead and give it a try. Now, I'm not telling you that the devil won't put up a fight sometimes, but it doesn't make him any less... Uh, uh, it doesn't make him any more powerful and it doesn't make the authority that Jesus gave you any less powerful because it will hold true and if he puts up a fight and if you just stand your ground he'll have to yield because you're coming with him with the sword of the spirit which is the very word of God it's the oh wow it's powerful come on saints we have authority that we can stand in and walk in you don't have to stay where you used to be because because you're not that person any longer. Can someone say, Amen? I'm ready to open up some doors. You know, I was thinking uh, the other day we were doing a prayer walk and we were walking around town, and Delany and I were, were, were walking down the street here. And and I was praying, Lord, break in. Lord, show us how to break in. And then it just hit me. Well, I better be careful. Because if I say that very loud, people are going to think that I'm walking through here trying to find a way to break in their house. I was talking about the Holy Spirit breaking in, of course, and the knowledge of Jesus. Well, that in the world, he has to break in. The kingdom has to break in. But in the church, he said, in Revelation chapter 3, he said, I'm standing at the door knocking, and if you open the door, I'll come in and have fellowship with you. So I'm telling you, Jesus wants to give you authority. He wants to come in and give you power and victory. And he'll come in and he'll share all of that with us, and he shouldn't have to break in. He shouldn't have to break past our attitude. He shouldn't have to break uh, past, uh, you know, our achy back. You see, when, when we open the door to Jesus, he'll come in and we'll begin to walk in the authority that he gave to us. Can you say amen? Now, there's another aspect of this powerful new life that I think we should just take a minute and explore, and that's the fact that it's real. Because sometimes we kind of act as if, well, that's going to come someday in heaven. But no, saints, I'm telling you, it's real, and it's for now. Uh, maybe you've heard it before. It's not original to me. Many theologians have said it, that the kingdom of God is now and it's not yet. 
In one sense, it's now, and in another sense, it's not yet. I think the best illustration of this that I see in Scripture comes from the life of King David, because from the moment the king, uh, I'm sorry, from the moment that Samuel dumped the oil on David's head on that hillside, David was king. He was as much king as he would ever be. But David didn't come into the full manifestation of his kingship until years later. Now it was years later when he sat upon the throne and ruled with an iron scepter that everybody had to acknowledge him as king. But early on on the hillside, the anointing came upon him and he was able from that time to begin to walk in many of the kingly aspects and he was already as much king as he would ever be, especially for those who recognized his anointing. Now this has significance in what we're talking about because God's kingdom is now. Jesus has already come. He's risen from the dead. That same power lives in us. He's given us authority in the here and now. And yet some aspects we're not going to see till later. Now, I don't want to take all the time to explore why that might be. Sometimes, like it or not, it is because of our lack of faith and unbelief. Other times it might be because of what other people are doing and just because we're in a fallen world and and just things are happening. Uh, Some of David's growth had to do with his choices, but other parts of David's growth from the anointing to the throne had to do with other people's willingness to receive him. The same principles apply here as we talk about the kingdom breaking in or manifesting itself in our our lives. The same, the very same principles apply. Now Jesus is just as much my king as a believer as he's ever going to be. I recognize who he is. And so I'm going to begin treating him like that now. He's not going to be more of a savior later, more of a redeemer later. He's going to be just as much as he is right now. But the fullness of that sometimes I'll see later. But here's the question. How much, how much of the fullness of his authority should we see now. Now in Jesus' case, it's not him growing in you know, to his godliness like David was growing into his throne, but it's us growing up under him as sons of God and learning to walk in the authority that he as king bestowed upon us. It's about us growing up into it and Jesus is giving us that space of time to learn to grow in this world and in this reality to declare his glory. I hope that makes sense. Uh, At another time, I'd love to explore that a little bit deeper and a little bit more. But I want to go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. I probably won't get through all those verses, but that's the passage. And I want to uh, explore this whole idea of this being real authority, real new life, It's not pie in the sky or something just for heaven coming someday. It's also here right now for us to walk in this authority that Jesus gave us and to walk in this new life that he's given us. So Colossians chapter 3, and I'm using NLT, New Living Translation. I think in this particular passage, it brings out some really good things, but all the translations are good. It's the Word of God. So uh, we're going to look at verse 1. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ. I want to just start right there. You, you see, it's not just talking to to the original 12 or to the early church. It's talking to us. You're a you. If Jesus is in your life, he's talking to you. He's talking to me. That's what the word says, and I'll take it. He says, we have been raised in the new life. Do you see, it's past tense. The kingdom is coming. We will, you know, someday be, perf- be perfected like Jesus, but we've already been raised in the new life. The old means dead. The old has passed away, and the new has already come. So that means that this authority and this new life is for right now. It's not just for heaven. It's for now that we have this authority and power issued by the decree of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Look, he goes on to say, set your sights on the realities of heaven. I love it how the NLT brings that out, the realities of heaven. Heaven is real life. The kingdom of God is real. Now, uh, there are, when, I, when I say reality, it doesn't mean that we're to deny this reality. It's very possible for us to live in multiple realities. Now, I'm not talking about some new Disney movie. 
right now. I'm talking about the truth of this. That we, When I say we can live in multiple realities, there's the natural earthly realm, and then there's the heavenly realm where we're seated with Christ. All right? So, uh, if, for instance, if... if my, I, I said back earlier, if my back is hurting, it's a reality. I don't have to deny the fact that my back is hurting. My back hurts. If it hurts, it hurts. Uh, that is reality. But there's a higher reality that says Jesus is the healer, and I can exercise authority, and I can speak to it, and I can believe him for it, and he can heal my back. And many, many times we, when we believe in him for it, uh, we've experienced that power of him raising us back up, sometimes instantly, sometimes over time. But if we stick with it, that authority that he gave us will manifest itself. And yes, it was real. My back did hurt. But it's just as real that my back doesn't hurt now. And it's just as real that my back didn't hurt before. And then my back hurt, and then it doesn't hurt again. Do you see, all of these things are real, even though our experiences may vary. So uh, I'll try to illustrate this a little bit. You know, I, this is a small church that we're pastoring right now. We're going to believe God, and it's going to grow and everything. And, and, and I'm just uh, uh, a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody, as the, the song says. But I'm also a son of God at the same time. And I also walk in authority. And I preach in this little church of just a few people right now. And it is the reality. It's the truth. Let's not deny it. It's where we're at. But at the same time, I've been on mission trips where I've seen whole villages give their life to Christ. On one particular trip, an entire uh, village in India gave their life to Jesus. A Hindu village with one known Christian in it. Uh, gave their life to Jesus when I preached, not because I'm a great preacher, but because we went in authority of Jesus, proclaimed who he was, and people responded to that. So you see, that's just as much my reality as preaching in this little church is. Both are realities. We get to choose which reality we want to spend most of the time in because both are real. And it's very true that if you catch me when I'm hot and on fire and full of the anointing on a Sunday morning, now, now I, I hope it won't always be true, but you might find me as a different man on a Monday morning after virtue's gone out of me and after I've ministered to people for the weekend, I'm the same man. It's, uh, you, you know, it's the same. Uh, this, that's just as real on Monday the morning as the anointing was on Sunday morning. Do you see this? Both are real, but we get to choose to walk up in that higher reality because Jesus gave us the authority and the new life so that we could do it. And these are the realities of heaven. There's going to be trouble in this life. There's going to be difficulty. There's going to be attacks. There's going to be warfare. People are going to hurt us and abuse us and misuse us and persecute us and, and we're going to mess up on our own just fine sometimes. And these are realities. We don't have to deny them, but we can choose to exercise the authority to overcome those realities with the higher reality. And that's why it says, set your mind on heaven where Jesus sits in the place of honor at the right hand of God. Jesus sits in the place of honor. You see, when Jesus is honored, his kingdom will manifest itself. He's still the king. The reality is, is that Jesus is the king of this whole world and the devil's been displaced. Can someone say amen? But when you come into this place where we honor Jesus, where we sing worship songs and where we uh, have a humble, teachable spirit before the Lord and we invite him and honor him as king, his kingdom manifests itself in this place. He's always the same king, but there's a greater manifestation of that reality here because of the honor that we give him in this place. Come on, somebody. Now he says in verse 2, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ and God. You see, it's a real life that he gave us. It's not a Sunday school story. It's not, not a children's book. It's not, not a pie-in-the-sky scenario. Jesus gave us real life. We died a real death because he died in our place. He died on a real cross, was in a real tomb, and had a real risen, rising from the dead. And now we have real power in us because he died in our place and now we have real new life 
He's given us new life because we've hidden our life in Him. And that's what it's talking about. He took our identity to give us His identity. And because of that, we can now walk in new life. You need to understand something. When I speak to something in the authority that Jesus gave me, I'm not speaking in my authority. I'm speaking in His. I'm hidden in Christ. So it's not like I'm speaking it. It's like He is speaking it. Oh, come on. Now, you know... God forbid, but if you went out and you bought a car and then you can't make the payments and so the bank sent someone out to repo your car, that's not going to happen to anyone in this place. I'll say amen. But, but the bank sent someone out to repo your car and then somebody, some big old burly guy comes out bigger than you are and he gets out the chains and, and you know, the puts it down and starts pulling it up on, uh, on the ramp to take your car away. That's not the banker. That's not the man with the authority to take your car. It's some banker wearing some suit sitting up in Cleveland that has the authority to take your car. But he's issued that authority, and so that man gets to go out under his authority and take the car. Now listen, nothing negative like that's coming into your life. I'm just illustrating for you that just because Jesus told us to do it, that it's not really our authority, it's His, and we're just obeying what He said to do. So when we believe God that He'll reach people, and so we witness to them, it's not because we think we're a good talker, it's because we're believing in His authority that He'll do what He said He would do. We're just, we're under authority, man. We're operating under His authority authority when we do these things. When we go and we pray for the sick, which we do, we believe for healing. Uh, Now, sometimes we don't always get a manifestation of it. But there is the reality that the healing is for now, whether we get a manifestation of it or not. It's just as real now as it'll be in heaven, whether or not we see the now manifestation of it. It's now and it's not yet. But when we pray for the sick, we do it because Jesus said to do it. And he said that when we do it, that we would have authority to heal the sick. Now, there's no power in me to heal the sick. But there's power in Jesus to heal the sick. Come on, somebody. And the same power that raised him from the dead is in me. So I speak in his power and his authority. And then we see a manifestation of it. Now, I, I, I don't see enough of it yet. I don't see as much of it as I want to see yet. I will see it, and there will be more of it, and we will believe God for it. But I've seen quite a bit of it. Not enough, but I've seen quite a bit of it. On that trip I went on to, to Columbia, years ago, and we went in, and, and I couldn't speak the language, and there were other interpreters there, and a man was hanging in a hammock in what I call a mud hut, and uh, I didn't know he wasn't even a Christian, We just and I didn't know he was an uh, uh, invalid, and we laid hands on him, he instantly got up, he accepted Jesus, and he was healed. And I said, you're the most important man in Columbia. Now, I want to see more of it, but the reason that happened wasn't because I'm an American, or because I'm a good preacher. It was because we just exercised the authority of what Jesus said we could do. We believed God for it without even knowing that we were believing God for it. And as we preached to him, faith rose up, and Jesus did the work. Friends, we have the power to live in this new life now. We have the power and the authority to walk this out now. In the name of Jesus, we're believing for it. Amen. Well, I, I'm going to just kind of conclude it there on this segment because this is just a recap uh, of the Sunday morning message. I guess you could call it kind of like a Sunday night message. Unfortunately, our recording didn't come out right, but I just felt like the Lord wants this word to get out. So I thought that I was just supposed to summarize it for you here today. I hope you'll be blessed by it. I want you to know that we're available to you if you need us. But most of all, Jesus is always available to you. And he's put his power and his authority in you so that you can live a new life. Now, join us next week. Uh, for the whole Sunday morning service, I hope, while we explore uh, the next aspect of living this new life now. God bless you, saints.